Okay, uh, hi everyone. Uh, so today I make this video uh, is to summarize the portfolio theory that you learn in the finance syllabus. Okay, so for every finance student, right, uh, for sure you will have learned this uh, portfolio theory. Okay, uh, this should be the, in the first few chapters of your investment subject. Okay, so uh, let's talk about this. Uh, I'll do a summary about this portfolio theory. So first, uh, in the traditional way about uh, managing your uh, investment, right? So how what is our objective to invest? Of course, to earn return, but also we want to lower down the risk. So uh, based on the traditional uh, perspective, right? How to lower down the risk is by diversifications. Okay, uh, diversification. So diversifications means that you should invest in many many different uh, stocks. Don't put all your money in one stock. Okay, don't put all the eggs in one basket. So, uh, how to achieve this diversification? So they say invest, okay, invest in to many uh, different stocks. Okay, so uh, from the traditional perspective, right, we know we should invest in many different stocks, but we don't have the idea is how many stocks we should buy. Okay, so that's the traditional uh, idea. So when it come to this uh, uh, reason, uh, more modern uh, portfolio theory. Okay, so in the modern world, right, uh, we know that uh, back to in 1950s or 1960s, right, the first portfolio theory, uh, modern portfolio theory suggested by this Markowitz, okay, uh, came out. So uh, Markowitz, uh, they say, yes, uh, we should do diversifications in order to uh, manage our portfolio. So this is one of the objectives. Okay, and also uh, Markowitz says uh, you don't really have to buy really a lot of the stocks to achieve diversifications. So if you buy the correct stocks, basically you can diversify your portfolio efficiently as well. Okay, so the Markowitz, uh, the, he come out with the idea says, what kind of stocks you should buy? You should buy low correlation stocks. Okay, low correlation stocks means this kind of stock, uh, the stocks, right? They always move in, the, uh, the price always move in different directions. Uh, for example, this is a stock A, stock A, the price movement, okay, over time. And then uh, we know that this, that's another stocks, stock B, okay, stock B, the price movement over time. So if we can create a portfolio combining stock A and B, right, into a portfolio, then your portfolio price, uh, your portfolio value, right, should be very steady over time, okay, like this, this is your portfolio. So what we know here is uh, Markowitz says you should buy those low correlation stocks. Why? Because for those low correlation stocks, right, when you earn money from one stock, you lost money in other stocks. They move in different directions. So at the end, right, your gains is offset by the losses, so the portfolio will become very stable. So in this case, you can see your portfolio is very good because you uh, diversify most of the risk. It's a very low risk portfolio, but you just keep the return. You still see a return for, uh, earned by this portfolio. Okay, so the Makoi says you can buy low correlation stocks to create optimal portfolios. Okay, to create optimal portfolios. So uh, that's the idea on how to create the optimal portfolios to buy the low correlation stocks. And then this is a very efficient way to achieve diversification. So you don't, uh, so compared to this traditional idea, right, we don't have to really have to invest a lot, a lot of the shares to achieve diversification. You just invest in those with low correlation stocks. Okay, low correlation. So uh, Markowitz uh, also come out another graph, right? The return and risk graph. Okay, so he says uh, there's one thing we call efficient frontier. So I believe every finance student, you have heard of this term, efficient frontier. Uh, so basically what is it about? Uh, it, it came out from this Markowitz theory. Uh, so it says if you buy all the low correlation stocks, all the correct stocks, uh, okay, then you basically you can achieve an optimal portfolio with the risk and return combination like this on this efficient frontier. So all the optimal portfolios are on the line here. So what you can see here, this line is to the left and top right. Okay, so it means that for the same level of return, right? Same level of return, this combination of portfolio will have the lowest risk compared to other investments with the same level of return. Okay, at the same time, uh, for example, compared to other stocks uh, with the same level of risk, uh, this portfolio, optimal portfolio will have the best return okay you can see so the efficient frontier is located to the left and the top why because they are they are representing the optimal portfolios combinations uh, where you create it by buying the correct stocks uh, those with low correlation stocks and to achieve a very good diversifications here okay so that's the idea for Markowitz portfolio theory uh, basically they say we should diversify the portfolio how to buy low correlation stocks 
And then uh, this is the example A and B, low correlation stocks, always move in different directions for the price. Okay, and then uh, the, so that you can achieve an optimal portfolio. So this kind of optimal portfolio will have low risk compared to others and a high return compared to us, others. Okay, so basically we also call it a very high sharp ratio portfolio. High sharp ratio portfolio. Okay, so Okay, so this is the uh, <coughs> number one porf uh, modern portfolio theory, right? Okay, so that's number two. Uh, after the Markowitz portfolio theory, right? Uh, there are some other uh, researchers they come out with their the extensions. So based on Markowitz theory, right? There's one extension we call CAPM. Okay, uh, suggested and uh, proposed by this uh, Sharp. Okay, so basically Sharp uh, proposed this CAPM. Uh, what is the contribution? Is first, uh, based on Markowitz. He says the risk level in the Markowitz is measured by uh, standard deviation. Measured by standard deviation and then uh, why standard deviation is the measurement for the risk or volatility of the stock price. If the stock has a very high volatility, uh, then basically the standard deviation will be very high as well. Okay, so uh, this CAPM says if you measure the standard deviations, uh, use, uh, the risk using standard deviation, and according to Markowitz, uh, every investor should hold uh, an optimal portfolio and achieve the diversifications. But even though you achieve the diversifications, you will still, uh, so still facing something we call market risk. Okay, so even you already, okay, already diversified. Okay, so still facing market risk. What kind of uh, market risk? Uh, market risk. So it means that even though you hold a very diversified portfolio, you buy many, many shares, right? So when market crash, right? When the entire stock market crash, so all these stocks, right? Their correlations will basically increase during this period. And then all these stocks will crash together. Okay, meaning all the stock A, B, C, they, the price will crash together. Correlation suddenly increase. So he said, no matter how diversified you are, right? Okay, you will be still facing the market risk. Okay, that's the issue for the Markowitz theory here. Okay, and then uh, Sharp also come out another points. Uh, he said he come out uh, one pricing model. Okay, so uh, the model I believe everyone will see this equation. So return, okay, return for the investment will be equal to the risk free rate plus a beta, and then times the market return minus risk free rate. So here, why is the beta suggested by the CAPM? He said, uh, since you already diversified. And what you are facing is only the market risk in your portfolio. So why not we just uh, use another way of the measurement for the risk to measure just the market risk. So the cap memory one contribution is uh, that they come out a beta to measure market risk. Okay, rather than the uh, total risk in the standard deviation measurement. Okay, so uh, for example, this one, if you uh, if the market is more than one, it means there is a particular, your portfolio or your stocks is facing a very high market risk. Okay, so when the market crash, you experience more uh, uh, losses here. Okay, so this CAPM, he uh, suggests to measure the market risk using the beta. And what about the model? The model make a very co uh, good contribution to the finance industry uh, is that he, the shop, right, the CAPM, links the market risk to the expected return. He says, based on how much okay, uh, risk you take, okay, you should expect uh, how much uh, return. So this one, the, the cap is right, able to link the risk you take to the amount of return you should entitle. So compared to a traditional perspective, right? We know we invest in many stocks, we achieve diversification. But in the traditional uh, model, we do know uh, we cannot link the risk to the return. Meaning we know we take a higher risk, then we should enjoy a higher return. But uh, how how can we to have a quantitative measurement? Like if I take a 5% uh, standard deviation, how much more return should I get? Okay, so the cap am able to link this one. So based on how much the market risk you take, okay, you should expect how much you just put uh, use this model to calculate. So if you invest in a stock with a beta equal to 1.2, you just put the figure into this model, then automatically this model can tell you what is the expected return you should be uh, foresee, okay, if the market is efficient uh, here. 
Okay, so this is a contribution for our buyer cap and uh, pricing model here. Okay, so it can help the investors to understand uh, based on the, how much the risk the portfolio they create, uh, what kind of return they should expect. Second point, uh, another one, uh, contribution is this model can be applied to some of the company's project as well. So when the companies carry on some projects, right, based on how much the riskiness the project has, the company can expect how much return from that. Okay, so that's the uh, implications by the model here. So basically, the portfolio theory here can uh, both the Markowitz are and CAPM are the major theories that we will study in the finance syllabus, and then it provide us the they provide us an idea about diversification and how to do the diversification efficiently through buying co low correlation stocks, and then how to create the optimal portfolios, and also how to use the CAPM to link the market risk to. Uh, to the returns. Okay, that's the idea for the uh, modern portfolio theory here. Okay, and the summary for this, uh, the finance syllabus you have okay, here. Okay, thanks.